Another Ramadan is refreshed by Coca-Cola and nourished by Checkers Custard. In alhamdulillah, nahmuduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakala alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihi allahu falamudillala wa man yudlil falantajida lahu waliya murshida wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful all praises and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the giver of life. To him alone belongs all our praises and thanks, and to him alone is our return. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our noble messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I greet you all with the best of greeting, the greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I remain your brother Muhammad Saeed, and of course with me in the studio. Is my sister Sophia Salahuddin Sofitulma. How are you doing today? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Uh, how is Ramadan? Uh, Ramadan is going well, alhamdulillah. All right, All right uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, as you know already, uh, we're going to be bringing in a scholar in the building to discuss uh, some of the topics that we have today. But before we bring in the scholar, we would like to go on a short break, and when we return, we will begin. Assalamu alaikum musulmin duniya baki daya lokacin sahur ko bude baki ku kasance tare da checkers custard domin checkers custard ya dace da masu yin azumi ramadan mubarak masu yana Welcome back to the talk segment of another Ramadan TV series. We have our guest in the building and he is to dissect the topic Mahu al Islam. What is Islam and who is a Muslim? And of course, the guest is no other than our beloved Sheikh, uh, Al Imam Abdul Kabir Al Asfar. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum It's nice to be yeah, in the studio. The pleasure is mine now. Back again. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> How is uh, Ramadan now? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Amen, amen, amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it uh, easy for us till the end of amen. the month of Ramadan. Amen. Um, today, inshallah, ya Sheikh, we are going to be discussing about uh, who we are and our school of thought. Uh, as a <coughs> believer of Islamic monotheism, you know. So, Mahul Islam, what is Islam and who is a Muslim? Alhamdulillah. Uh, let's begin. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, um, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made it easy for, here, for us to be here. And we send his blessings and upon the soul of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his house with his companions and all those who follow in his path. So it's a very interesting question. Ma uh, islam man huwa al-Muslim? What is Islam? Who is the Muslim? These are very important term questions um, to ask. The questions that only an intelligent person asks himself or herself. Um, oftentimes people are oblivious of the most basic questions they are supposed to ask themselves. Yeah. So if I ask myself that what is Islam? And then who is a Muslim, it means that I am at that point going out of my inherited religion as a Muslim. Like for a lot of us, we, I mean, we, we are giving back, back, yeah, we are giving back to us Muslim. Uh, fine, then, but it's a good thing to really rediscover one's Islam 
this is the best to understand that I'm Muslim because I want to be Muslim, not because my parents are. Mm -hmm. And these questions are the motivations for such um, a personal discussion. So I would say, Mawal Islam, what is Islam? I give the technical definition. And, and then scholars will say, Al Islam, what is Islam? Mention the three things Al Islam, to submit to the creator of the heavens and the earth in his oneness. And if you've identified and submitted to the one who created the heavens and the earth, you are given a 100% decision to follow and obey him. And then, and to stay away from, and this is where Islam has its uniqueness. Islam is the most monotheistic faith. When we talk about monotheistic faith, we talk about Judaism, Christianity, Islam, this, the Abrahamic faith as, as it's called in academia. So when you look at it, Islam is the most strictly monotheistic faith. That nothing, nothing, nobody will participate in the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his right of determining, uh, of deserving worship. It, um, scholars said that um, there are certain things that are axiomatic in the life of the they, they are facts that you, nobody can doubt them and the first one is that um, look there was a time we're not here no no i mean we we all know this that there was a time we're not here even yeah. the, the the earth in itself the universe in itself had a beginning yeah this is the fact and then we find ourselves here now I mean, it's only, um, um, we have certain philosophers who doubted their own, um, uh, uh, themselves. Postulations. The, the, the Descartes, for instance. We only have philosophers like Descartes who doubted every single thing. Uh, and he came to realize he could not doubt himself. And that, that philosophical cogito ego sum. I think, therefore, I am. Because he couldn't doubt himself. Um, so we realize that we are also existent. That's axiom number two. And then the third one is that we are not going to be here forever. We're going to leave this world. Absolutely. And then you act from these three axioms, then you have questions that will come out of each one of them. If you've not been here forever, where do we come from? If you are here now, what's our duty here? And if you're going to leave this place, where are we going to? And then the scholar will say, your response to that. I mean, you, this is, I've defined the academic yeah, Islam, yes. right? Your response to these fundamental questions. It's only a very reasonable person that will sit down and ask himself or herself this question, determines your Islam. Right, and determines the quality with which to attach to your Islam. So, Islam is about a response to our Creator that is the originator of the heavens and the earth. And then, the purpose of us on earth is to worship Him. And then, we leave this place, we are going back to Him to give an account of what we've done on earth. So, if you're going to be asked about uh, Islam, this is what's going to be my response on Allah's best. Ah, Nama. Nama, Nizakum, Nama, You've said um, a Muslim is anyone that submit totally to the will of Almighty Allah. Yeah. Now, um, there are some people that they were born into Islam. Like you said, they have Muslim names. Yeah, um, Roshida, <coughs> Rukoya, and all that. But they do not practice Islam. Like, they don't pray. They don't do any other thing except during Ramadan that everybody will fast. Are they still Muslims? No, this, is a, this is a very, very um, beautiful question. So I'll answer it on the surface because if I'm going to go deep into it, <laughs> they're going to go and I'll, I'll, I'll gesture in the direction of the depth anyway. So that's okay. We'll talk about Islam is about two things, right? It's about proper belief and proper action. It's about orthodoxy, you having the correct belief, and then orthopraxy. We'll call orthopraxy is like there, is, there has to be action. When the Quran talks about the Muslims, there are two conditions. Alladina Amanu. Sorry. Sorry. Yani, those who have faith and then who do good deeds. Faith is not sufficient. In fact, the argument yeah. is that mm. if you have faith, it should reflect in your person. Your right? Uh, the Hadith of the Prophet said that in the field, just like the, um, the, just like the mm. there's a piece of flesh in our body. It has a heart. When it is healthy, the entire body is healthy. When it is faster that, faster just like cool. If it is unhealthy, the entire body is unhealthy. Allah or your call. This piece of flesh is the heart. If the human heart is healthy, for individuals that you've mentioned, it should reflect in their duty, uh, in in their in their persons via actions. There are two things. One, they are ignorant of what Islam says. That's number one. Number two, they are just being lazy about it uh, 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 number three let me add the third one they are rejecting even if they are muslim they are rejecting that islam 
They're creating, okay. they're creating a buffer. Yeah, they feel that no, we even if we have Muslim names, look, I, that was the religion of my father. I don't really care. I don't really care. Um, there's a there's a um, a subsection of the atheist world that are called um, there's a specific name I've forgotten. Agnostics. Not agnostics. They they don't care if God, um, an agnostic uh, is not you know, is, is you know, not sure. You know, you know, you know, an atheist is uh, easier to catch, yeah. but the agnostics. Yeah, they say they say they don't. They are not sure. But it, we can't hold them. The, there's a particular <laughs> subsection of these. Okay. And and these are people with Muslim names, but are functionally atheists. Hmm. They are functionally atheists. Atheist. So so this it can be three of this category. For the ignorant one, ignorance may be an excuse, yeah. possibly. Uh, it's very difficult in our contemporary world because we're Muslims all over, um, but it's a possible excuse. For those who are um, the second category, they're lazy about it, their Islam may be at stake. And for those who have decided, that, look, I'm, I'm not, even if Islam is true, I'm not ready. Uh, this one, it would be, they would not be deemed to be Muslims. So the, the category we need to really care about are the ignorant ones. And then they, they the lazy videos. ones. That okay, you people have affirmed that you are Muslims, but the Islam can't be complete if there is no action to back it up. In the least, you must pray. And then we have Muslims who don't pray. We have Muslims who only pray once a year during the Eid al Kabir. We have Muslims who pray twice a year, Eid al Kabir, Eid al Fitr. We have Muslims who pray Every once Friday. a week. <laughs> Every, Friday. Every Friday. Uh, so we have these categories of Muslims that you can classify them based on the time they pray. Time we have pray. them Muslims who pray twice daily. Um, Subi and them and and, 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 Isha. Isha. and you have to tell them, look, the person you are worshiping with Subi and as long as they look, I've tried that far. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so you tell them, no, you, you need more. Then you can't just do. You, you don't. Uh, you don't get to choose how to worship Allah. Well. Absolutely, yeah. uh, uh, a lot of people would even say, you know, oh, my Islam is not that. That is, you know, that statement, my Islam. Mm -hmm. You know. It's anyway, in the heart. Yeah, yeah. My how Islam you know, is more, in the heart. I'm more <laughs> yes. Yeah. How do you know that? And subhanAllah. Yeah. And people would even say things like, "Did you know that some of these people that are not even using jilbab will even enter Jannah before those who all those uh, nonsensical statements?" Me. And then that, that that's where I'm coming to. There is this buffer that this newer generation use now. It's it's a some a, some sort of a defensive mechanism to sway away uh, corrections. You know, when you're trying to uh, approach young Muslims, uh, and especially those ones that are in university and they feel that they've known one thing or the other, or they are now into life, you know, you're trying to uh, uh, put some sense into them, and then this make this defensive statement of, uh, please don't judge me, don't mm -hmm. judge me. How do you respond to that? Yeah. Still on that. Yeah. Islam, Islam, um, Islam is a religion of uh, peace. Islam brings everything and everyone together, both living and non-living things. Nam, so Islam is the world of peace. Islam is Islam is a religion of peace, submission to the ways of Allah. My religion, religion of sincerity. Okay, so knowing the origin, Islam, an Arabic word derived from the word salam, which means peace. Basically, it means um, being peaceful in almost every of our acts. Um, Islam, Islam is a religion of peace. It's a religion on its own. Let me say Islam means surrender or submission. So when you hear the word Islam, Islam is a religion that covers all the affairs of mankind. All religions are named after an individual, which is creature. But only Islam is not named after any individual because Islam, religion of peace. Islam is particularly a way of life. So the way we approach things, the way we do things, from the way you talk to people to the way you interact with them, relate with them, um, is having a defined pattern. Assalamu alaikum. Muslim dunia baki daya. Lokacin sahur ko bude baki ku kasance tare da Chekas Custard. Domin Chekas Custard ya dace da masu yin azumi. Ramadan Mubarak masu yana. Ah.
Familiar with the game Simon says? Me. Mm. Uh, oh, okay, you all know. So, this boy here, his name is Torik. So, we are going to play a game called Torik says. So, Torik says, raise your right hand up. Mm. Torik says, raise your left hand up. Mm. I didn't. Torik did not say you should drop your right hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. No. Torik says, um, Lean forward. What? Lean forward. <laughs> Tommy says lean backwards. <laughs> Drop your Tommy says <coughs> sit like that. Eh? Drop your left hand. The dog says you should drop your left hand. <laughs> You're not supposed to drop your left hand. Tommy says smile. <laughs> Tommy says drop your hands. <laughs> Tommy says say. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Kiddies segment of another Ramadan TV series. Today we'll be talking about Ramadan. And I have my lo lovely lady here, Justina, has volunteered to read a very short story about Ramadan for us. Bismillah. Bismillah. Hassan and Anissa are very excited. Ramadan is starting. Ramadan is a special month for the Muslims. It is Ramadan, says Daddy. People have seen the Ramadan moon. Daddy and I will fast tomorrow, says Mommy. We will not eat or drink all day. Hassan and Anissa are asleep. Anissa hears a noise and wakes up. Plates are banging and water is bubbling in the kettle. Anissa gets out of bed and creeps downstairs. A kitchen light is on. Mommy and Daddy are eating egg and toast. Why are you eating breakfast at night? Asks Anissa. Daddy laughs. We are having sahur. It's a meal before you fast. Please tell me more about Ramadan. Okay. Jamila wants to know more about Ramadan. Who knows something about Ramadan to share? Um, Let's start with Jalal. What do you know about Ramadan? Ramadan? Is a special thing. Uh, people share love with. Ramadan, I, I understand what you're trying to say. Ramadan is the month where we share love. The month of love, of sharing. Yes, that's nice. Okay? Ramadan, Ramadan is the month of, of, knowing, of knowing the way poor, and, poor people and the needy live in order to appreciate what you have. Mashallah, that's beautiful. Ramadan is a month where we experience what it feels like, what the poor and the needy go through their everyday life. And that shows us to, that teaches us to appreciate what we are blessed with. Thank you, Bilal. Yes. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. Mashallah, Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. Jasina? Ramadan is the month where, uh, where Muslims feel what it feels like to be poor and not have enough food. Absolutely. Ramadan is the time, it's the month of empathy, really. It's the month where you get to know what it feels like to be poor, to be thirsty, just what the average poor and needy go through every day. But do you guys know Ramadan is also the month of the Quran? Huh? Do you know that Ramadan is also the month of the Quran? No. Yes. yes. Okay, so what know. do you think is the month of the Quran? Ramadan. Why do you think it's the month of the Quran? I'll explain to you. Yes. Because it's a holy month and we have to read the Holy Quran. Yes, we have to read the Holy Quran. Ramadan is the month of the Quran. It's the month in which the Holy Quran was revealed. Yeah. And I'll be reading a little about this book. Ramadan and, and the Quran. Quran. Okay. Ramadan and the Quran. Yes. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would often sit alone in the cave of Hira near Mecca to pray and think deeply asking the creator of the heavens and earth for answers to the questions that surge through his mind. What is man's true role in life? What does the Lord require of us? From where does man come and where will he go after death? All alone, the prophet will remain deep in thought, surrounded by nature, seeking answers to all these profound questions. On one of the nights of Ramadan as usual, the prophet was sitting all alone in the cave. Suddenly, the archangel Jibril, 
appeared before him in human form and taught him the very first verses of the Quran. The Prophet felt that the verses had actually been written on his heart. In this manner, the Quran began to be revealed to, uh, by Allah to the Prophet Muhammad through the angel. It took 23 long years to complete all the verses of the Holy Quran. Being the true word of Allah in human language, the Quran is a book of learning for all mankind which will last forever. It provides correct and understandable, understandable answers to all the central questions which arise in the mind. So imagine you have questions that you, are, you don't, you worry, you don't, you don't know, you have, imagine you have questions that you really want to ask, mommy and daddy don't have the answer. The Quran has all the answers that you ever want. Whatever question you want to ask me, I may or may not know them, but we can always find the answer in the Quran. Quran. Yes, that's the beauty of the Quran. It serves as a guiding light, inspiring and leading the believers on the right path. The guidance given in the Quran is one of a kind and a great blessing from Allah. If you follow it, we will enter Jannah. Paradise. Yes, same Jannah. Yes, same Jannah we're talking about. If you follow the teachings of the Quran, we will go to Jannah, inshallah. The month of Ramadan, therefore, is a yearly reminder of this blessing which has no equal. The celebration of the revelation of the Quran is not observed in the usual way, but it is marked by not eating and drinking and by showing gratitude to Almighty Allah by various forms of charity. Fasting in this month is like saying thank you for the divine blessing. Remember what, what we said earlier? Fasting is a form of, is a way for you to learn to appreciate Allah, to thank Allah, to make you sober, to reflect and think, oh, is this what it feels like to do this? Also, it's also, it's also a period in Ramadan is also a period where you can, where you understand that there are so many things you can do, you just don't do it. I'm going to give you an example. If, if somebody says, you don't need to eat all day till for the next that many hours, you'll be like, mommy, but I'll be hungry, I can't do it, I can't cope, I'm thirsty. But during Ramadan, you find you're able to do it. Do you understand? Because you've made up your mind to do it. Ramadan is about commitment to what Allah has dictated for us to do. Ramadan is compulsory on every adult male, and female. So for some of you children, you are not, it's not compulsory for you to fast in Ramadan. However, if you are able, able to, to, it's okay. To I know, I know, you're still young. But for those that can fast, it's encouraged for us to fast. Children, it's, it's a way of practicing for when it becomes compulsory on you. It's one of those, it's recommended during the month of Ramadan. If you can read the entire Quran, it's recommended to do so. However, if you're, unable, if you're unable to, depending on how fluent your um, recitation is, your tajweed is, you can read the English translation of the Quran. So the month of Ramadan is a month of reflection, of connecting to the Quran. So Ramadan is not just about fasting and saying, I'm not eating today, I fasted, oh, I fasted 20 days, I fasted 30 days. It's good that you fast 30 days. But beyond fasting, there are other things you can do. You need to learn about the message that Allah is sending to us, that Allah sent through us, True Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there's a dua you're, that's recommended to say before you break your fast, and Jawad has promised to volunteer to read it to us. Bismillah. Bismillah. Zahaba zama, watabatil urmuk, watabatil ajur, insha'Allah. And what does that mean? The thirst has quenched and left witness, and with the will of Allah, reward is proven certain. Inshallah. Allah, there's only one God, and we are the children of Adam. Allah, la ilaha illallah. So that's a wrap on um, today's episode of Ramadan. Um, we hope you're able to learn a thing or two from me, and you act on whatever it is you've learned. And remember, share whatever it is you learn. There's a reward in sharing beneficial knowledge. So from myself and my children here, it's what? Ramadan Ramadan Barak, my Muslim brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of another Ramadan TV series. I welcome you to the kitchen segment once again. Now for this episode, 
we have a familiar chef. But before I get right into the business of the day, I would like to take a short break. Tum, 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 tum. Salamu alaikum. Musulmin dunia baki daya. Loka chen sahur, kubu da baki. Kuka san che tarada, chakas kostad. Lumen chakas kostad, ya da che da masing azmi. Ramadan Mubarak, masuyana. Tum, 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 tum. Welcome back. Like I said, we have a familiar face in the studio today. Welcome, Chef Oge again. How are you doing? Very well, and you? I'm fine. So what are you preparing for us today? Well, 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 today we are we're making a funny room. Wow, you're taking it to a tradition. Yes, and uh, we'll be pairing it with a uh, semo. Okay. We have our pepper mix. Okay. Um, we have a vegetable here. This is a vegetable, we call it choco. Choco. <laughs> choco. It's thoroughly washed and okay. blanched. blanched. Okay. Yes. This is our fish. Crayfish. Red oil. This is a roux. Look at beans. There's no air for we roux without a roux. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. So this is the seasoning our onions and here we have um, our meat and the meat stock then we have a um, diced for more inside. inside did you use um stock or anything to boil your... yes of course so a little bit of seasoning and salt okay that's all so first and foremost um, as usual we have to wash our wash. hands dum, 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 dum. we're going to be starting with our red oil Yeah, the onions goes okay. in first. Like I said, um, we always need to bring out that flavor. Yes. From, so onions always goes in first. I think that should do now. Okay. I don't want it to brown. So I normally like to fry this. This is the first bit. time I'm actually saying frying with pan. It's optional. Fish. You can put it inside immediately. Okay. Or you can boil it with your stove, but I decided not to, so that it won't break. Okay. At the end of the day, it will still be, able to have be visible chunk. inside. Okay. So I'll fry it lightly, not too dry. I'm going to put in the crayfish. This is the first time I'm saying that you have not added the stock to no, what you're doing we'll yet. Wait for the pepper to dry a little bit okay. before we put this. Then I'm going to put the iru. This okay. one, some people fry it alongside the onions the, and the palm oil. And the palm oil. Okay. Because as the, there's no effort without you, <laughs> so we don't want it to be scanty. Exactly. So, I think it's about time we add our season. Let me do with this. So I'll try not to add the water. Mm, why? I mm. thought we were going to pour everything in it. I will watch it first, then I will know if I would be needing, if I will be needing it. Okay. You should be needing this. We need a little bit of water. Okay. So let's add so a spoon of the stock water. Okay. So next we'll be adding um, the vegetable. The vegetable. That will be the last 
there so I'll be adding so I'll stir this to check if it's check if it's okay Don't forget to blanch the vegetable before, so we don't want it to stay for long yeah. here. So this is okay for now. I I love doing this separately, mixing it with water first, don't then don't. turn it before adding this one. So to avoid those having lumps okay. and lumps in this. Um, Okay. Yeah, you have it, guys. Eforiro and Semo. Now, Chef Ogi has done a lot in this kitchen, preparing this meal, taking us through the steps of how to make Eforiro. She even gave us inside tips to how she prepares her own Eforiro. I hope you guys will take our time to also prepare this meal. Guys, don't forget to catch all our episodes on youtube at another ramadan tv and don't forget to follow us on instagram at another ramadan tv series to catch more exciting recipes that will nourish your body till next episode see you later Jeff Ogi, sign out. Bye. Bye. another ramadan is refreshed by coca-cola and nourished by checkers custard dum, 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 dum. Is here again, I'm praising the Lord. From dawn to dusk, we fast and pray. We chant and move to change. Bring down the lanterns, the light of the dawns. We call and we the Quran. Do not even know speak in love, your brothers and sisters. We buy one for God to tonight. The man, the only Quran was revealed. He's here again. Another Ramadan. Another Ramadan. Another Ramadan.
Another Ramadan is refreshed by Coca-Cola and nourished by Checkers Custard. Monday.